How and why you should send your tracks to Ox or Bus channels. I'm KJ, and hopefully I can help you understand why this is very important. This is a procedure that is used often by mixed engineers, and the reason being is simply to avoid from CPU overloading. You know, this 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 concept is to conserve on uh, computer usage. And it, it really makes sense to bus a certain amount of tracks to one channel with one plugin or whatever specific plugins that you're using. Oftentimes, and you know, say for instance, you, you you may be mixing vocals, background vocals, or whatever. So instead of putting compression on each vocal or EQ on each vocal, you will bus them to a aux a auxiliary channel in order to achieve that specific procedure. So. Right in front of me is a Logic Pro X session that I build something very simple. This is what it sounds like. Now this track is not to demonstrate how good or bad I am in music production. It's just to show you, you know, give you a, a basic demonstration of why busting an ox is very important. Okay, so that was just something very simple that I did. Now, let, let's get more in depth into why. Okay, so if you are looking, what I'm looking at right here, I have a kick, hat, snare, cymbal, piano, bass, and like a string pluck sound, okay? Now, this is a rather small session. My sessions never look like this. There's always <laughs> multiple things going on. And so busting my tracks to an auxiliary channel definitely helps me out a great bit. Now, say for instance, you have maybe 20 drums or whatever the case may be. In this instance, I have four things that consist of drums, okay? I want to bust my drums to a simple auxiliary channel to control everything at once. And this is how I would do this. Now, currently, everything is coming out through my stereo out, okay? So basically, this is how you do this. You select every channel that you want to affect or send to a certain bus and you select the bus, bus one. And the, and the good thing about this is Logic Pro X create the auxiliary channel automatically. So you don't have to go in and make a, another channel to do anything. And I'll simply label this. And this is the sweet thing about Logic Pro X. Say I, you know, I have four four instances of drums here, and I need to add something else later on or something like that. And okay, I need to bust that as well to the to the drum channel, and it's labeled here. Bust one drums in parentheses. Okay, so that's that's pretty cool right there. So you know where everything is. So this is this is what happens. Okay, I can mute, I can mute the auxiliary channel, I can solo it. All right, I can also adjust my volume. Or I can put compression on this one specific channel. If I wanted to, you know, just using, you know, Logic Pro X stock compression. I still use this compression, believe it or not. It's very good in my opinion. It's, it's very simple, straight to the point. It gets the job done. It's a compressor and a limiter at the same time, which is pretty cool. So just based on this plugin itself, you eliminated an extra plugin. So now you don't have to put a limit on it. But if you're using this plugin, and you need more things on, I will probably make this last because of the limit on there. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is say for instance, I wanna add some reverb to everything. Now, I just selected my channels, the actual channels that I have MIDI data on right here. I didn't touch this one because this, this, this is the aux channel that we just created. So I just wanna select these and we're gonna use our sends. We're gonna send it. So as you can see, it created another auxiliary channel for us automatically. I'm just gonna go ahead and re rename that reverb. And we're just gonna use a simple Logic X reverb. This one is 
the best one, in my opinion. Well, not so much the best one, but this one gets the job done for what I needed to do. Because there are several other reverbs in here. But say, for instance, um, I want reverb on everything. And you play it. And you're like, OK, I don't hear any reverb. Well, that's because you have to turn all the reverb up on each send. You can control how much you send over to the reverb auxiliary channel. Let's exaggerate that just a little bit more. Okay. Now you can hear the reverb, all right? So what I can do to control how much I can do it all types of ways, I can control it from the master channel fader here. Let's put that back. Or I can actually control the input or the output gains inside the plugin itself. Now, depending on what you're doing will determine what fader or what knob you will turn in regards to how much reverb that you put on your, your, your current channels, right? So in this instance, say I want to, I want everything else to have reverb, but I don't want as much reverb on the kick. So you're just controlling how much you send. I'm saying so it just really depends on what you're doing at any given time you know but that's pretty much how it works now I didn't say that it wasn't a good idea to add plugins to any given channels it's just I feel that it's better that you use a bus auxiliary if you want to achieve a, the same thing across any given channel so in this instance I want reverb on everything but I will not put reverb on every single channel because that's a CPU hog. You understand what I'm saying? So in this instance, I would like my stream plug channel to only reflect a certain thing, a certain sound. So I put a delay on here. I don't know if you can tell the difference. Let's go straight there. This is where I am. Okay, so I hope you heard the difference there, but that's that will be the the only reason why you would add a plugin to a channel is to affect that specific sound for that specific channel. You understand what I'm saying? But I wouldn't put this delay on everything unless I'm trying to achieve a delay on each channel. And if I'm trying to achieve a delay across each channel, I would rather pull up another auxiliary channel to achieve that process. Now, the other thing I want to tell you guys about is inside of Logic Pro X, they have a new thing called Stack Tracks, which is beautiful. I use it quite often. Now, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And that, that process is also the same as sending your channels to an aux or a bus channel. And this is how it's done. Again, select the channels you want to affect. Then you will go to track. And then you will go to track stack. You can also achieve this by selecting your tracks inside of the range window and right clicking. Hit track stacks. And I would rather go with the summing tracks because they give you more details and basically um, you can click between them both and explain it to you but I like the summing because you can you have more parameters you can control and this is what it will look like it just created a auxiliary but in this case we've already created that aux for the for the drum so as you can see the drums that we that was over here it moved over here to the beginning of the drums over here okay so that's pretty cool, you know, in the instance that you, you know, you sending stuff, you know, you started out sending stuff like I did to an auxiliary channel and you say, wait a minute, 
I would rather use track stacks. And basically what he did was move it over, okay? So I don't have to label this because it's already labeled. But the beauty of this is I can tuck away those drums. So now my drums are all, is in this folder. So imagine 20, 30, 50 drums doing different things. And this, this session would be filled with a lot of stuff going on. It would be confusing. But with track stacks, it makes it easier to organize everything, okay? So now, again, I can control my drums. As before nothing nothing changes it's the same thing it's just now it act as a folder as well I could tuck away bring it also in the mix as well as you as you see which is beautiful so I hope I was able to explain everything to you guys and you know in, in detail uh, if you have any more questions please feel free let me know and I may upload another video in the future Thanks for watching.